Welcome to Cook 30 for Kids. I'm Chef Jeremy Dixon from the Revive Cafes in Auckland, New Zealand. And today I'm going to share with you how you can cook a deliciously healthy restaurant quality meal in your very own home kitchen. Today we have two very special guests with us. We have Amari and we have Shai all the way from Georgia. Welcome guys. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank it's you. awesome to have you here. So we're just going to ask you a few questions so the kids at home can get to know you a little better. So we'll start with you, Amari. So what is your favourite vegetable? Um, it's sautéed onions. Sautéed onions? Yes. They're nice and really light and sweet, aren't they? They go well in many dishes. And what's your favourite vegetable? My favourite vegetable is cabbage. Cabbage? I bet there's actually not many kids out there who have the favourite vegetable as cabbage. So what, how do you like having cabbage? I like my cabbage like kimchi and I like it raw. Raw cabbage, wow, that's great. Kimchi is a Korean dish. Yes. Um, that's great with cabbage, so that's great. And it's great in coleslaws and other dishes as well. Awesome. And um, so, Murray, what is your favourite fruit? My favourite fruit is watermelon. Watermelon. Well, look, we've got some on the, on the programme today. You're going to enjoy this dessert we've got coming up. And so, Shai, what's your favourite fruit? My favourite fruit is apples. Apples. Is this like cooked apples or apples or normal apples? What's your favourite apple kind of way to have it? Raw apples. Raw apples, just taking it and eating it. Yes. That lovely, delicious crunch, and they're very healthy for you too. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, we better um, have a look. So, guys, what's on the menu today? Indonesian gado gado vegetable bowl with satay sauce. And for dessert, we have tropical fruit with lime. That sounds delicious. I cannot wait. Okay, to start with, we're going to start with a, a clear bench. It's really important before you start cooking, a few minutes clearing things away, putting the dishes away, getting the food out can save you a lot of time later. So we've got a chopping board, we've got a knife, all our ingredients out, we've got a pan and a pot here, boiling water that's just been boiled in the jug. And are you ready to go? Yes. Okay, so the first job we're going to do is the thing that's going to take the longest. So always think ahead, what's going to take the longest? And the thing that's going to take the longest now is the potatoes. So gado gado is an Indonesian dish, and it's like a nice big combination of lots of different vegetables with an amazing satay sauce. So potatoes are a major part of that. So we'll just get um, you chopping potatoes. So we've got these beautiful little baby potatoes. Don't they look, look really gorgeous? Mm, found these at the supermarket. You can just use normal big potatoes if you want. But um, whoop, they're going everywhere. They're trying to escape. So, um, Shai, if I can get you just to cut these in half. So just basically put your hands around them and just cut them in half like that. And we'll put them into this pot over here. So if you can start chopping those away. I'm just going to put the gas on here. And I'm going to get some boiling water and put this in. So why do we use baby potatoes? Well, baby potatoes have a really beautiful shape about them. They've kind of just got, they just look beautiful and nice. So if you can use them, that's great. If you've got a big potato, just chop it up into cubes. That'll be fine also. But wherever you can, you want to look for different shapes when you use things. Okay, so that's, that's getting bubbling there. So we'll put that in there shortly. Do we cut the grape tomatoes too? Yeah, the, the grape tomatoes, yes, we'll cut those later just before we put them on. So that's a good job that's coming up. So the next job we're going to do is we're going to, while you're cutting those, is put the tofu on. So we've got a really nice um, pan-fried tofu that we're going to put with this dish. So I'll just put this gas on here nice and high. And don't know if you used tofu before, you could buy it in the supermarket in packets like this. Have you tried tofu before? Yes. It's quite nice, isn't it? But you've got to cook it. It tastes, doesn't taste that, that nice when it's raw. So I'm just going to just um, cut the, thing, the uh, packet open. And inside there's lots of water. So um, Amari, if you can... Um, Go over to the sink and just let all that water drain out so we don't oh, get it yeah. everywhere. Just go over to the sink and just let it drain out. That'd be okay. wonderful. Okay. Is it draining out? Yep, that's great. There shouldn't be too much in there. Bring it back here. How are those potatoes going? Look at that. It's going very well. <laughs> that's great. Get shopping there. It's that's awesome. everywhere. Just give you a hand to do a couple as well. Oops. It's good always to do things in team here. They like to roll away, don't they? Yes. These are beautiful little potatoes. You can also get kind of coloured potatoes as well. Whoop, whoop, they're going everywhere. 
Oh, thanks. So you can see if you can rip the the, top, the packet open there, Amari. So just put it put it here and just see if you can open the packet there. Mm, right from here. Yep. And um, Shai, if you can put all those potatoes in that boiling water. All so right. it's boiling water, so you want to kind of drop it and let your hands move away quickly. So that'd be great. Get them in there. Look wow. at that. So we've got this tofu there. This is just made from soybeans. So um, we're going to use this. And Ooh. by itself, it doesn't taste that nice. Like anything, it's kind of raw. But if we put lots of um, some flavour with it, it's actually really delicious. So what we do to make it, we just simply... You can help put the um, potatoes in if you like, into the pot. So the potato, those potatoes will probably take around about, probably about 15 minutes, I think, to, to cook. You couldn't get soft. Oh, wow. yep, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Careful, it's boiling. Just drop them from, yeah, drop, drop them low. That way they're not going to splash as much. Nice one. Perfect. A and then we're just going to chop this tofu into cubes. That's great. So we're just going to just slice it through here like this. And then we're going to leave it in the same pattern. So if you want to chop it up into into little kind of squares, so we've got cubes, that'd be great. Okay. So when using a sharp knife, always make sure you've got your parents supervising. Probably a little bit bigger, so probably about twice that size. Okay. Brilliant. So about one centimetre or half an inch. And keep it in formation because we're going to go and cut it back the other way shortly. That's wonderful. I'm just going to add a little bit of, a little bit of oil to the, that black pan there, Hamari. So around about one tablespoon. So just keep pouring until I say stop. Yep, that's perfect. Wonderful. Great. And then we can basically got those that cut that way. Then you can basically turn them around and you can start slicing that way and cut them into cubes. So you don't want to be cutting every single slice multiple times, probably double the thickness. So go to about there. That's great. Um, so basically by lining them up like this, you're going to save a lot of time in your chopping. How's that looking? So why do we use extra firm tofu? Awesome, awesome question. So firm, firm tofu will stick together. If you get some of the soft tofus or the silken tofu, this will just turn to kind of mush or turn to kind of, you know, almost yogurt type texture. So we want to keep it as cubes. So yeah, extra firm tofu. So yeah, put it in the pan. Now it might sizzle a bit. So be careful while we're doing that. So when you put it in, it's great. And Amara, if you can grab it. Whoa. <laughs> There's lots of moisture in tofu, so we want to get rid of the moisture. Yes. So Amara, if you can go and grab a spoon, a wooden spoon, and you can be in charge of stirring this. It'll sizzle for a little bit to start with, but then it should kind of calm down. This is how my mom gets the yeah. moisture out of tofu. Exactly. So that's going to kind of reduce down and hopefully brown yeah. up. What do you think? So when you're stirring, you want to basically get in there and move everything around so it doesn't burn. So, and when you do it, be really gentle, because if you get too too um, aggressive with it, it'll start breaking down. We want it to keep that like cube shape. So just just a very gentle kind of stir with it there. That's wonderful. And I'll just see this pot handle here. I'll just turn this round. You want the pot handles to be away from you, or else if they're in front of you, you can knock them off. So it's a really good safety tip to have. I'm gonna move this pan on here as well. So yep, that's great. It's a gentle stir, just keeping it moving. That's a brilliant, brilliant start. I really like when my tofu is nice, crispy and brown. It's nice, isn't it? So that'll be like that in probably about, probably five or 10 minutes. Yep. So we're gonna start making this gado gado. And it's just basically a collection of vegetables with a nice sardé sauce. So I'll just give this board a little bit of a wipe. And then we can um, start cutting okay. all of our um, vegetables. So we're gonna start with, um, some cabbage, mm -hmm. which is your favourite vegetable. Look at that. So um, we're going to cut it there. Oh, and all we're going to do is just cut it into quarters. And we're just going to just cut off the core there. As you can see, it's quite, you know, it's, you don't want to eat that bit there. Yeah. And any leaves like that that are kind of rough, underneath is this beautiful purple kind of colour. So if you can just slice it, just really thinly through there, so we've got nice long thin slices. Right. That will be wonderful. So when you're slicing, you'll be slicing the knife through. You're not pushing the knife down. You're going to slice it through, and that lets the blade do the work, and it makes it a lot easier for you. That's great. It's quite a quite a tricky shape to hold that one. Yeah. Let's clear the, the the counter of some of the things we've got here. That's our first vegetable. That's great. We're also going to do some um, these lovely green beans you can get from the supermarket. So we've got these here. So we're going to just going to cook these. And what we're going to do is we, instead of using another dish to actually actually cook them, 
we're just going to put them in with the potatoes. Okay. So they, they'll take about five minutes, so we'll pare pe them now and get the ends chopped off. Yep, just, now put it in one corner there. So what we want, we want to cluster the colours. We want to make sure we've got a different colour in every area. We're not going to spread it around as one big dish. And you get maximum colour impact like that. So if you can like chop off the end of these guys, you can probably get like a couple of them together and line them up and kind of, you know, chop off the end like that. And that can save some time. So kind of line it, you might want to try with say three up. So if you can chop those ends off, that'd Tomorrow. be great. Okay. And we'll just put them into a bowl temporarily. Um, that we can, oh we're going to actually cook them, so we'll just put them oh. in a bowl and they'll go in the water later. So we're doing a few little jobs now to kind of help us out later now that we've got some time. Now what other vegetables we've got, we've got some cherry tomatoes. So when you get cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes, or there's different names for them, it's really good to get them. Um, different colours, you can get red ones and orange ones, I've even seen um, little black ones as well and purple ones, so you can get some really cool colours, but even just red ones is fine or even just normal tomatoes. Um, but the more kind of, when you're thinking colour, thinking shapes and textures, a little bit of extra effort there can make your dish look just that little bit extra special. And that's what makes the difference between home cooking and restaurant meals, is that little bit of care that you do. So next time you select your vegetables, um, just, yeah, just think about what can make them more special. Here we go, we're nearly done. I'll just put them in there. All right. Here we go, so we'll reserve those for later. And now I'll get you to chop up some of these cherry tomatoes. So cherry tomatoes are nice when they're chopped in half. You kind of get that nice bite through the, the middle part of it. So if you want to um, we'll just get rid of some of the stuff here. I'll just, excuse me, I'll just clean the, right. clean the knife and get rid of this off the board. And if you want to start chopping some of those cherry tomatoes in half, right. um, oh, there's a, a rotten one there. But the rest are looking great. So just chop them in half like this, just to, um, there you go. So, that'd be great and put a cluster of red ones there and a cluster of yellow ones there. Uh, it's probably around about 10, I think. So this is going to be very colourful. Very colourful indeed. And that is the main thing you want to do with your dishes. If there's one thing you can learn from today about cooking, it's this. Colour is everything. And just one dish, can, one little colour of a, a, a picky ingredient can transform a dish from looking average to looking amazing. And have a guess which colour is normally missing. Guess the colour. There's one colour that just transforms every dish. Any ideas? It's green. Oh! So most recipes end up looking generally red or orange or brown. In a lot of cases, adding a bit of herbs or something green can just transform a dish. So oh. that's often the answer. But just think, you know, look at the dish and think, what colour of the rainbow can I add here to make it look beautiful? It's, one of, it's a great cooking principle. I'm going to use some cucumber as well. So I've got a cucumber here, so I'm just going to... I'll cook that here, so I'm just going to cut it in half. And that's there. an English cucumber? Yes, or we call it a telegraph cumber, cucumber, so a nice cucumber that you can eat this with a nice soft skin. Some cucumbers have quite a, um, a tough skin, so you want the ones with a soft skin. You can get little Lebanese ones as well, which are quite nice. So we're just going to just cut this around here, like that, and just going to slice it up, get rid of the end bits, and just make just lots of little cubes here. That's a nice way to cut a cucumber. It is quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. Very quick as well, so I'm going to put this over here. Have a little cluster in the corner here. Is that of like cucumber. a salad? It kind of is. It's kind of is like a peanut salad, but it's kind of like a supercharged salad because we've got lots of yummy stuff in it as well. It's not just um, green stuff. It does look yummy. <laughs> well, if you've just joined us on Cook Thirty, we are cooking up a storm in the kitchen with Shai and Amari from Georgia. What is on the menu today, guys? Indonesian gado gado vegetable bowl with satay sauce. And for dessert, we have tropical fruit with lime. That sounds so good, I can't wait. <laughs> awesome. I'll just do a few more cherry tomatoes here. So we're making excellent progress. We've got things underway. The um, potatoes are probably a couple of minutes away. And we're, the t and we're getting most of the vegetables done. I think that's most of the things we need to have there. So now we're going to make the satay sauce. And this is satay sauce, or basically a peanut sauce, is amazing. Now, question for you. What is the difference between satay and saute? Do you know? For sautéing, yes. you do, like, you put some oil in the pan and you just put the vegetables in? Yes, or? that's right. That's so saute, like a saw, is sautéing, where you make things soft. And satay is... 
a sauce. Has Junior a, a, pe a peanut Most sauce? Most of them are crispy. Sauce. Yes, Just a little exactly. Bit more to go. Awesome. That keeps them going. They're getting nice and crispy. Look at those. You're doing an awesome job there, Amari, on the stirring. Thank yeah, you. saute and saute. Saute is Gotta keep this one so on. onions in the pan and saute is what we're making now, a peanut Ooh. sauce. So we're just going to add some exciting ingredients into this blender. Oh, one more tomato. What well, we can't yep. leave him there, can we? No. Oh, he's going to get lonely without his friends. So we're going to put some exciting ingredients in here. So the first thing we're going to add is, where's my peanuts gone? Here okay. they are, they're hidden down here. So just from the bulk foods, we've got some roasted and salted peanuts. So if you want to um, give us one cup, just grab a cup measure of peanuts, put it in the blender. All right. Um, we're just going to add lots of lovely ingredients yep. here. We're now going to add some liquid honey, one tablespoon. You could use agave or um, uh, maple syrup or any kind of healthy kind of sweetener. We use a lot of agave at home. Yes, it's a great, a great sweetener from cactuses, believe it or not. One more. Uh, no, just one cup is fine. Okay. Um, so we're going to put in some sesame oil. So you're going to put in a teaspoon, sorry, a tablespoon of sesame oil. Can you guess or do you want to have a measure? I'll give you a measure. There we go. Okay. One tablespoon of sesame oil. And we want one tablespoon of soy sauce or tamari. And these are just lovely kind of Indonesian flavours that just really make this sauce just really yummy. Yes. Um, we're going to add some ginger puree. So you can get ginger in these little kind of things from the supermarket. We're just going to add two tablespoons of that. Ginger and peanuts go together amazingly. It's mm. about, uh, empty it out, probably two tablespoons. Um, and limes, lime juice. Lime mm. juice is amazing. So if you want to, we'll just cut these in half. If you can squeeze as much lime juice out of these as you can. A lot of people you choose lemon juice. Yes. So you could use lemon juice as well, but lime is a really nice flavour there. Give it a good squeeze, and these limes don't have pips, so we don't need to worry about that. Yes. So while you're doing that, I'll just check the potatoes. And to check the potatoes, just put a knife in them and just see how soft they are. So, yep, that, that went in quite well, quite easily, these, this knife. So these potatoes are pretty much nearly done, probably about another minute, and they'll be ready to drain. So they cook really, really quickly, especially when they're nice and small. If you use big chunks of, of um, potato or whole big potatoes, that could actually probably take perhaps 30 minutes to cook. So the size of your vegetables really matters when you're kind of cooking fast. It's looking beautiful there. I think it's almost ready. We'll turn that gas off there. It'll keep cooking for a little bit more, um, but the, effectively that tofu is, look at that, it's nice and spongy and it's crispy and it's looking looking absolutely beautiful. Just going to add a little bit of salt to it, just to give it a little bit of a, a salty taste. Um, often I'd add more kind of things to, um, to the tofu, but because we've got other flavours in the satay sauce, we're just going to keep this just like a very simple, salty kind of a um, kind of oil on the tofu, and all the other flavours from the, the satay sauce will do a lot of work. So we just, yeah, it just needs to be fully flavoured. Um, oh, before we finish, we've got these beans here that we cut before. Mm. We're just going to put these in the top here, and those will just take a couple of minutes just to cook through. They just need to be very just lightly kind of cooked, and that boiling water will cook them just very briefly. Because beans have got kind of quite a raw taste, so we want to make sure we just cook them a little bit. So why do you boil the green beans? Bean meat, just to, just to keep them nice and soft, soften them up a little bit, which is great. Just check my recipe, anything missing? Oh, we need a quarter of a cup of water, so if you can get a quarter of a cup of water. Quarter. And yeah. we need some, we've got lime juice, got all the ingredients in. Wow. And we are then ready to blend. So oh. that's a whole cup, we want a quarter of a cup. A so just, just put a quarter of that in. Okay. So yeah, put some of it out there. This is a lovely sauce. You could use peanut butter if you wanted as well, but it's really nice when you're using, you know, fresh, fresh peanuts. Okay. So you're gonna mix it up? We're gonna mix it up, put it, pour it in there. And if you wanna press the button, press that high button there. And we'll be whizzing around, look at that. Let's have a tidy up while we're cooking that. And that is, look at that. Ooh. Actually, grab a spoon. I want you to try some. You've got a guys, have got to try this. There you go. Try a little bit. Do you want to try a bit of Murray? What do you think of this? Just try a little bit mm. of there. Dip your spoon in. What's the taste like? It tastes a little sweet flavor. Yeah, it's got a bit of honey in it. Mm. Should it be like um, 
Sour dressing? Kind of, yeah, kind of, kind of sour dressing. No, no, not really, but everyone has a different flavour of it. Oh, wow. So, it's a really nice sardine sauce, and we haven't actually cooked this one. This is one you don't cook. It's just going on just like this over the warm vegetables. So it's kind of a warm dish, not mm. a hot dish. So it's a really delicious, really, really quick satay sauce. You can make them on the stove with onions and things, but this one here, this one works really well, doesn't it? Just yes. a blender. Mm-mm. That's delicious. So we're now going to do the dessert. And I'm going to flip the board over. We've been cutting um, vegetables and things on here, and you don't want your dessert tasting like vegetables and things. So Whoa. we're going to flip the board. So this side here has got a clean side that we can use to do the next dish. And we're just going to prepare some basic tropical fruits. This is not a very, very fancy dessert at all, but it so tastes amazing. So the tofu amazing. is done? Sorry, the tofu is done. It's just, just sitting there nicely. Just clean the, clean the knife. And what we're going to do now is just cut up some of this fruit. Okay. So we're just going to, we're going to cut it for the, well, this is a mango, and we've got a papaya and a watermelon. And we're just going to cut some fruit that is just going to be really yummy just to have. So we're just going to cut this around there. I'll just do this one here. We're kind of nearly running out of time here. That's the hardest thing about this um, This program is actually getting finished. Michael, like my big brother, his yep. name is Michael, he loves mango. Does he? Yes, it's a great fruit. And with fruit, you kind of want to shop in season. Sometimes things are in season at different times of the year, and that makes it easier as well. So I'll put some mango. I'll get some watermelon here. Ooh. So we're just going to slice a yes. thing off here. <laughs> watermelon. That's great. Watermelon. So we're just going to just cube it up. Actually, I'm going to do slices, so we're just going to do lots of little slices. I'm going to arrange it in this little nice wooden dish here. Just roughly, we'll do some slices of watermelon as well. So just uh, slice off, you want to slice off all the stuff you don't want to eat before you kind of start cutting it. And then we'll just kind of cut through here. So you can kind of cut it here if you want, but just, I quite like with this one, just doing little wedges you can actually use to um, pick up with your fingers. So it's much easier. So we'll just kind of arrange those in kind of a roughly, Ooh. a rough area there. And then we've got some of this. What do you guys call this? Papaya. Papaya, excellent. So you generally want to cut it down the middle. Look at oh, that. Is that going to wow. taste good or what? Oh, yeah. That's a lot of seeds. It is. So we just want to scrape out the seeds like that. Maybe you can plant them and make some more. <laughs> exactly. That's what seeds are for, exactly. So there we go. And then we have a lovely papaya. So just this lovely tropical fruit will just be a lovely fresh kind of taste. Look at that. So whatever your favourite fruit is. And this is much healthier than having like a ice cream or something like that. And it's much, much better for you as you know. So I'll just kind of cut this as well. And again we're just going to take all the skin off. Oh, that's a tough one. Whoop. A little bit of waste there. It's a very pretty colour. It is a very pretty colour indeed. It's kind of like orange pink. Exactly. Like a salmon colour. <laughs> it is, yes, true. So here we're just going to just, I'm just going to just cut it off and just cut little wedges that we can just pick up with our finger. Again, slicing through like that. And we'll just scatter that in the bowl. And to finish it off, the, the, the number one thing that just transforms this kind of a fruit is... Oh, thanks for your help there, is lime juice. Mm. Lime juice, just that kind of nice acidic kind of flavour of lime juice. Mm. So we can put this up here now. Making a good mess here, aren't we? Yeah. We'll just transform this. So I'll get you guys to squeeze some lime juice over it. One for you, one for you. Lime juice has a great flavour for a lot of things. It is. And we're just going to slice another lime as well just to... Um, we're just going to give some lime wedges that we can actually put it's on there to give it some lime. decoration. And that'll help it. Look how colourful that dish this looks with these lime things. At all. Very colourful. And in the break, oh, we'll add some more mango is. as well. And all we're going to do now is we're going to drain this, these potatoes. I've got a colander over here. Mm. There we go. And we know those are, are cooked now. Oh, and we're just going to basically put these into the, the gado gado. And there we have our meal. A little more garnish and that meal. And we're going to put, put the, the satay sauce over it and that will be a lovely delicious meal. Oh and the tofu as well. We need to get the tofu. Yes. Yeah. 
And there you have in just 30 minutes this delicious Indonesian gado gado vegetable bowl. With, and we've garnished it in the break with some cilantro, some mint, some chopped peanuts, that lovely satay sauce and some sesame seeds. Does that look amazing or does that look amazing? Amazing. amazing. <laughs> okay, would you like to say grace for us in Maori? Yes. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this day. Help the poor, please feed them, Lord. I just thank you for this food. Help them strengthen and nourish our bodies. In the name of Jesus, it is done. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Well, let's get eating then, eh? Yep. So I'll just, what you do is you just basically grab bits of everything and put it on your plate, all your favorite things you want. And then this lashings of the satay sauce. Look at that. Whoa. I'm going to grab your plate over. I'll serve you up as well. So give it a try. What do you think about it? Try that tofu because we haven't tried that yet, have we? No. This is tofu. just delicious. Well, thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Cook 30 for Kids.